Um, so good morning everybody, um, which I've met some of you before, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Karina Ginty from GMIT, so delighted to be here this morning to um, update you on this project and uh, it's been a very interesting six months and <clears throat> my colleagues, as Sarah said, were not able to be here today, um, very much involved as well in the project. So. Uh, it's, it's all around my experience at IE, you probably uh, remember we talked about this uh, last year when we presented and um, uh, it's all linked to uh, an initiative around recognising prior learning and uh, giving advanced entry or access to RPL applicants. Um, now to give you an update on the project and what we um, focused on for the TEL project, it was an RPL roadshow but there was a number of outcomes and a number of deliverables from that. So it wasn't just a case of delivering on site clinics and workshops, there was a whole build up time to that and post that and actually there's activity still going on because this project was in existence before we even started the, you know, the TEL enhancement piece. The My Experience project was established uh, probably about two or three years ago as part of the CUA and uh, we set about to develop an assessment tool for RPL applicants uh, using e-portfolio technologies and we looked at Moodle as the platform for that. So the opportunity arose through the Enhancement Fund to, um, to develop an online skills course for staff to access um, so that they were more comfortable with dealing with RPL um, applicants coming through but also to provide an information web website to provide some, um, um, some tools around understanding certified and experiential learning and also to share the assessment tool that we have developed with other institutes, so not just it within the CUA, uh, testing and trialling and working through uh, using that assessment tool but also we engaged with Waterford Institute of Technology and uh, Dublin City University DCU and um, as I said it goes on the engagement and the partnership and the sharing of knowledge will go go beyond the the project and um, and I'll talk you through that now in a moment Okay, so why did we do this and what was the nature of the problem and why we, I suppose we came about to um, to look for the funding in the first place and what it's helping to achieve. So a lot of the facts you're probably familiar with, you know, lifelong learning participation rate is quite low in Ireland when we consider, you know, to the EU average. We even on, in the employed sector we're very low as well. We're only at 6.2% compared to the EU, which is at 11.2. So there's lots of opportunities for um, looking at recognised prior learning and looking at work-based learning and opening up uh, opportunities for people to come into higher education at different levels. But we also need staff to be trained to deal with that. And that was part of, I suppose, one of our main objectives as well, is to provide some training tools and resources around that so, so staff would be more comfortable in dealing with and assessing RPL applicants. Other things that have arisen, you know, there's a lack of awareness around RPL, lack of marketing and promotion. I suppose that was our, I suppose, our objective around developing myexperience.ie. There's a marketing focus to that. It can be packaged very nicely and used uh, in a campaign for different markets, whether <coughs> we're dealing directly with the RPL applicants or if we're dealing with staff uh, in general who want to upskill and be more aware of RPL uh, assessment skills. So learners are also unsure how to build a portfolio and structure evidence of learning. Part of what this project has done is provide video tools for applicants that talks them through um, different elements, how to build the e-portfolio tool, and all of that links back out of the website, myexperience.ie. And then also the other side is academics are unfamiliar with assessing experiential learning. There is a fear factor around that. So that was our idea around developing this open online course that we showcased and we made part of our RPL Roadshow. And that's at, um, actually I'm going to give you an outline of that. Um, okay, so, so what did we do? We ran the clinics, we did a whole revamp on uh, the website, uh, we needed to make it more mobile friendly, we needed to think about the different, um, the different market groups that we were targeting and who our information was aimed at. Uh, it was important, I suppose, the, I suppose the main drive behind uh, doing the roadshow and uh, visiting sites and putting clinics on site in the CUA um, 
was to demonstrate the ePortfolio assessment tool and to show how it was designed and developed in Moodle and show how it was such a, a great tool for assessing learners and um, how it can help manage that whole process uh, for the applicants and for the assessors. One of the features that we were able to build into the tool um, as part of the feedback and uh, the different people that were engaged with us, we were able to look at building in um, an area on the Moodle site that is uh, for adding extra assessments. So sometimes when people submit RPL applications and you're looking at matching the learning outcomes and you're looking at all their experiential learning and what they've achieved and sometimes there is gaps in their portfolio of evidence and, um, uh, and academics sometimes struggle with how do I bridge that gap and how do I bring them over the line. So. Um, Part of one of the features that we developed on the tool was that there was an, a, an added assessment feature where you could assign a specific assignment to that candidate or a, perhaps a, a particular challenge or a scenario or a role play or something else that they had to do or submit by a certain date. So um, that would be taken into account as well. So we're about to release version three of the tool. It, we actually can't um, demonstrate that to you today because it actually doesn't come through until July 1st. So those of you who are familiar with Moodle, the new version of Moodle is coming through in July. So, um, and that's where we're, we'll be sharing the updated version of our tool, our, uh, our assessment tool with all of our partners. Uh, so Waterford IT and DCU are also getting this plugin, the most up-to-date plugin, to activate again in their institute and to um, to engage in the same processes that we've been working through. And as a result, we're growing a network of practitioners that are sharing knowledge and expertise around this challenging space of RPL. Okay, so the assessment tool, um, I'm not going to demo it, but there is a little video that uh, that um, I'll give you a link to that you can have a look at as well. Just to bring this up as well, more recently we were we presented, um, Gavin and I, at um, there was a national e-portfolio uh, symposium. It was held in DIT. And um, it, it, was, it was a great conference because it brought together people from all over the country that were um, uh, demonstrating or working in e-portfolio tools. And at the time, we, we presented on the My Experience tool. But we thought was very interesting was Helen Barrett was a keynote at the, uh, at the event. And all the messages and around assessment of learners and using e-portfolio tools and that, it really hit a chord with us in relation to our e-portfolio um, assessment tool. So that's one of the reasons why we've, uh, we've, I'm sharing that with you today as well. Okay, so as I said, we've created an open online skills course and we've put digital badges in that as well. Now, the beauty of this course, I, I think I've given you an outline of it, um, you all have a copy. The beauty of this course is it is not restricted to, um, to just the partners that were involved in this project. It's going to be open to everybody in the country. So we've designed it on an independent online learning platform. It's built on Moodle. It's called cpd.learnonline.ie. Anyone across the country can go in and you just put in your your role or the institute that you work in and uh, you can actually link from the website myexperience.ie but we purposely made it independent and I'll show you a link to it in a moment um, because we feel there's great potential to add more courses and uh, more online courses and, and more materials to this independent CPT site in the future. So um, again what we've done initially as part of the RPL Roadshow and the project we shared it with uh, staff in the CUA, which is GMIT, IT Sligo, Letterkenny IT, Waterford IT then, and DCU, who were our partners um, for the roadshow. So they are all getting access to this course and those materials. But as I said, something we want to do next year is promote it and uh, make it open to anyone in the country who would like to do the course. Okay, and there's digital badges, as I said, built into that. So this is, um, I suppose, the look and feel when you go into that CPD course, when you link it off. Um, let me see, can I show it here? Um, so when you're in the website, for my experience, there's a link there. There's an outline of the course, and um, it just goes through and then you create, or sorry, you person can go in and create an account and say what institute they're in. And then the outline, as I said, what's in the course um, is out outlined in the leaflet there. 
What's nice about this course is uh, the mixture of expertise that came together. Uh, we, we were fortunate to meet um, a great lady called Meg Bank, who's really, um, Meg Bank, she's really experienced in the whole RPL field in the States. And um, she had been over doing so a Fulbright scholarship with, um, uh, I believe, with Waterford IT. So that's how I, I got to meet her. And, but she was willing to participate and contribute to this course. So there's quite an, a, there's a nice international perspective on the course. We also, um, I also had a lady uh, in the UK, or sorry, in Scotland, from the QAA in Scotland, um, who delivered an overview of what they were doing in Scotland. Uh, we had contributions from Waterford IT, from Maeve O'Grady, from DIT, Anne Murphy. She's a, a really, I suppose, uh, an advocate and really strong in this space in RPL. And then contributions from ourselves. So there's a nice mix and there's reflective tasks built in. And it's three hours just if somebody wanted to go on and do a 10 credit uh, module, which is in, you know, in the teaching and learning space that could go towards, let's say, an MA or their own professional development, you can do that all also by uh, registering following up after that with GMIT and we have a 10 credit RPL module and it would be a case of them completing the assessment strategies and there's some on-site um, and online work as well. So there's lots of opportunities there. Somebody can do it short and sweet or they can go and take that as a, as a, a bridge to the next level. Okay, so um, just to go back to the uh, the course as well, just to make a note, it's just quite timely, the Student Success Toolbox. I know it's another project, it's not being talked about here today, but it's very timely, it was just released there, and we thought it was a great um, tool connection to have within the My Experience site, because primarily who this site is targeted at is mature learners or people looking to get back into higher education. And this initiative, again, which was funded by the forum, is um, as a whole set of skills and resources and tools and guides for people at the mature space in their life who are considering higher education. So just it's nice that we were able to connect that in with the programme. Okay, so um, I suppose that's some details around the learning outcomes of the programme. They get to reflect and evaluate on policy and procedures, legislation. So it's nice. We, we see we see great opportunities to expand and build on this in the future. There's a lot of work being uh, uh, taking place now at the moment nationally and with the QQI around RPL. An RPL practitioner network has been set up and the forum are also looking at RPL because there's a big job ahead next year in relation to professional development and re rolling out the professional development framework and looking at RPL and RPLing teachers and lecturers that work in higher education. So there's opportunities perhaps to link in our our tools with that as well. Okay, so um, so the local and national impact, we have, as, as we sa I said, the website enhancements, there's been some nice PR and social media, and um, when the whole project was launched and when we, when we, we commenced the roadshow, the clinics that took place on site, we generated lots of debate and discussion. Um, as I said, we've formed lots of really nice contacts um, in that space that are um, that have fed into the uh, training program. And we've showcased at the portfolio conference that was more, uh, more recently held in uh, TIT. The course available, as I said, it's available there to all higher education institutes, um, the online course, which is great. And we've created a network of partners in Ireland and Scotland and US that will continue to work. And um, this project is still living and breathing, as I said, my experience. Um, is here to stay and will develop further. So other things, evaluation and feedback. Well, we, yes, we've seen tangible outputs achieved that are open and available, as I said, to all higher education institutes, it's a great resource tool. Um, I suppose giving feedback on our experience of the, I suppose the tell week enhancement funds and that uh, there was restrictions around having it within March and within that timeline. And you probably know that Easter fell and St. Patrick's Day and, and then academic holidays. So that did present challenges on availability and staff. And that's why um, what worked out brilliant was the online tool, the flexibility of that and giving access to people, uh, having a launch time, having clinics around that and then giving them access and getting feedback after Easter, which was great. So um, year long tail development enhancement funds, we would say would enable more flexibility and timing of workshops. 
and also sustainability long term as well. Um, okay, and then the last point, despite the timing and restrictions, uh, we are planning installation of version three, as I said, which is coming through in the summer, which is great. So there's really lovely enhancements that are coming through on the tool. Uh, and that's a result of the engagement of the partners over the last six months and the staff giving feedback and RPL applicants, which is great. So I'm probably going to go time. Thank you. <laughs>